All right, quick little lesson in flooring. All too many times I see guys laying flooring and not undercutting their door jams, uh, things like that. A lot of times they'll use a contour gauge and they'll do something like this and shape out the area and then cut around it with their flooring. Something, lo something along those lines. This is not the right way to do it. You wanna take, multi-tool works the best. Run it along the bottom here. And then go just a hair above the thickness of the flooring and notch it out. Now what you'll be left with, it's, it's gone now, but what you'll be left with is a uh, just the cut line here and a cut line on the bottom. All you gotta do, take a screwdriver to hammer and chisel that stuff out. That way you can tuck the floor right under that and it'll have a nice clean look. Patterns. You wanna have a non-repeating, non-obvious pattern. You want this to be at random when you're laying the floors. You don't wanna do the stair step pattern. You definitely don't wanna do a 50-50 stagger with LVP. Um, some people will have a certain math formula to where it works out and looks random, but it's, it's uh, it, one, it does create more waste, and two, it also can still represent a pattern even if it doesn't look like it right away. Now this type of flooring is really good, and you can essentially lock this stuff together without a hammer or anything. It goes together really, really well. It's very durable. Shaw, always, I've always had good experience with shawl floors, not only the durability, but the installation itself. Yes, there's no underlayment here, and you know what? It's fine because this isn't even a concrete slab. There's a basement below here, and this flooring does have its own padding on the back. It doesn't need an underlayment. But if you want a nice seamless floor, obviously the baseboards are gonna stay. It's too risky to pull these up. Um, they're gonna break and it, which and there's, you know, plaster walls here. So it's gonna be a nightmare wall repair. So just pull the shoe molding up. If, if you're in a house that doesn't have shoe molding, you wanna leave obviously about an eighth inch gap. You don't want it tied up against the wall. Don't use quarter round. Quarter round looks cheap and bulky. Use shoe molding. Quarter round is literally just a quarter of a circle. Shoe molding like comes over and drops down really fast. It looks really good. It's low profile. And that's a great way to cover that gap. But yes, please undercut your door jams, entranceways, all that, and tuck that flooring un underneath of here so you don't have something that looks like this. And you'll have something that looks pretty seamless under there. You'll still have to contour around this area, but quarter round's gonna, or uh, shoe molding, is gonna cover up over here. You just wanna undercut from here over. And, and the same thing, you just wanna wrap it around to the other side and stop where this starts right there. The other nice thing about LVP is it's very flexible. Uh, it's rigid, but it's also very flexible. So if you're in a tight area where you need to butt those up in there, um, you can bend it and then slide it in. The last thing I wanna say about doing floors is the direction. You don't want it perpendicular to when you walk in. You don't want the floor going like this for the main traffic. You want it parallel with the direction that you're always gonna be walking in. Now, if you're doing LVT, which is the tile, or any tile for that matter, you wanna do that perpendicular so you can see the stagger or the third step pattern as you're walking in. Usually with a 12 by 24 tiles, I do a 50-50 stagger. So hopefully this helps. There's two main places where you walk into a house and you can see the floor, the LVP, the planks specifically. 50-50 stagger as you walk in, it just looks terrible. And then usually it's not undercut. Um, and a lot of times warranties won't uh, honor it either. So let me know if you have any questions.